What's up and welcome back to another live unboxing with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're doing the Asus Tough F15, probably the new budget king of gaming laptops, at least whenever it's priced at $1149. Jesus, that is such a freaking good price for an RTX 4070, a 100% sRGB display, at least according to rated by Asus, and an i7-12700H CPU, which is a pretty dang good CPU, though it is last generation. So that's one ways in which uh, Asus managed to save some money on this laptop. Now it comes with 16 gigs of RAM um, and a one terabyte SSD. That is just phenomenal value at 1149. Probably the best laptop that I've seen so far this year at 1149. So let's jump into my laptop list that I created with the help of my team, we manage this, we update this every single day to find the best deals across the entire internet. And this is a work in progress, but we are, we've got Cinemage R23, either factual numbers here or estimated benchmark results based on what other laptops score that are in a similar laptop category. So Cinemage R23 is great for measuring your CPU performance. Time Spy is great for measuring your GPU performance. And then we have these CPU and GPU performance per dollars. Basically gives you an idea of how how much value you're getting in the CPU category as well as the GPU category for each laptop. And you can sort and filter this laptop list by prices. And there is the ability to pop this open and switch between images of each laptop. Look, for, look at the reviews under each laptop. And if I've made a video on, on that laptop, there will be a link to that at the end of the images. The Asus Tough F15 has an i7-12700H with an RTX 4070, which is a phenomenal value. 16 gigs of DDR4, 3200, so a little bit slower on the RAM speed, but I feel like that's a very good compromise considering that it comes with an RTX 4070. Now the i7-12700H is a much better than some of even the newer CPUs. So we got a one terabyte SSD, which is phenomenal value again at the $1149 price point. Full HD, 144 Hertz, 100% sRGB. And I want to point out, this is on sale temporarily. This is going to be $1399. So at $1399, I thought this was still a pretty good deal because it's one of the cheapest RTX 4070s at $1399. At $1199, it's just, I mean, it's just phenomenal value. One of them is the MSI Pulse 15. It comes with an i7-13 620H, which is like a slightly cut down i7, it has uh, 10 total cores with six performance cores and only four efficiency cores. 12700H, you can see that it actually comes with 14 total cores, six performance cores, and eight efficiency cores. So you're getting more performance with the Tough from a CPU perspective because of the additional cores. The nice thing about the Pulse 15 is it's very portable and has a high quality QHD 165 Hertz display that's actually a higher color gamut than the Tough. And this thing's only 1149. So if you're after a higher quality display over say raw performance, then the Pulse 15 is very attractive. This is normally priced at I believe 1499. So 1149 for this one's an even bigger sale. The MSI Vector GP66, this has an i9-12900H, so it's a previous gen processor. This one's only a 14 core, 20 thread part. The big thing about the Vector GP66 is this has an RTX 4080 in it, a one terabyte SSD and a full HD 144 Hertz, supposedly only rated at 45% NTSC. This should be a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, so it should not be the same crappy displays that's in MSI's cheapest laptops out. This one, is currently the cheapest RTX 4080 that money can buy and provides a phenomenal bang for the buck, at least on paper. The Asus Strix G8, this is another monster sale, $2499. This, is, this has the top i9-13980HX CPU, goes to the maximum wattage, RTX 4080, so extremely powerful GPU, 16 gigs of DDR5, one terabyte SSD, and a QHD 240Hz 500 nits display with very close to 100% Adobe and P3 color gamut, so extremely bright, very vibrant, high quality display on this, and it's 2100. So this is a nice step up from the Vector GP66 both in CPU performance and display quality. The Omen 17, this has a 4080 for 2189. I'm, I'm mentioning this one because this one is still a good deal, but it's not as good, I think, as the G18. If the G18 is still in stock, I would go for that because it is an 18-inch chassis, 18-inch display, 16 by 10 with the 
it's got a better display. Every, almost everything's better about the Strix G18, but I think the G18 is probably gonna sell out. This one is one of the best deals under $1,000 at 899. Got an i5 12, 500H, RTX 4050, 16 gigs of RAM, DDR5, uh, full HD, 144 hertz, 70% sRGB. Now this one at 899 is quite attractive. I don't think this one's an amazing, amazing deal, but I think it's pretty dang good. And I don't believe this one's gonna sell out very quickly. So if you're at a $900 price point for your budget, this one's a good option if you wanna save some money and just play 1080p games. So this is the Tough F15 box. You can see we got the logo here. We got the logo here. You know, this is kind of their military design and supposedly has more robust build quality. Uh, we got this kind of interesting design thing up here. I don't know. So if you wanna pause it, you can take a closer look at those. Voila. So again, we have the Tough logo right here, and this is a metal back, which is nice. Now opening this up, we've got the another cloth, and here is the laptop keyboard. You can see we do have an awesome layout for a 15 inch uh, laptop. We got, a, we got a number pad, we got separated arrow keys over here. We got extra function keys along the top. Uh, you can see this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio display. That's one of the ways in which Asus is able to provide this laptop at the excellent price that they are. And it has adaptive sync instead of G-Sync, I believe. Well, it says G-Sync over here. So I guess it is G-Sync certified. So it has both. This I feel like may not be enough ventilation, which may cause, a, maybe cause a little bit of thermal issues. We've got one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A on the right side over here. In addition, we have a Kensington lock port and a fan exhaust over here. And then on the very back of the laptop, we have two more fan exhausts, but no ports in the back, which power port, an RJ45 Ethernet port, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4 with DisplayPort 1.4 support. So you can do high refresh rate, high resolution gaming output like the monitor behind me. And in addition, we have power delivery, 100 watts of power delivery support through that port as well. Well, and USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with power delivery and 1.4 support again. And then we have a, another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, and then we have our headset adapter port. The main criticism I would have of this laptop is there are only four total USBs on here. So two USB-C types and two USB-A types. And I usually prefer to have five. And then of course there's no full size or mini SD card slots, which is another downside or mini display port. So it doesn't have the most ports out there, but the ports that are included are high quality. Here is the power cable. Uh, almost six feet long, maybe just a hair shorter than six feet. Our power adapter, not huge, but also it doesn't really need to be that high of a power output. 240 watts on the back of this is the Asus power adapter, 240 watts. And of course, if you're on the go, you could use a USB-C power adapter if you need to as a supplemental power supply to keep your, keep your laptop running when it's low on juice. All right, so we've got the Asus Tough user guide. All of our little indicator lights, tells you where like the microphone and webcam are. You probably don't wanna look at it anyway, just in the unlikely event that your computer requires warranty service, please contact Best Buy or Asus for support. There's the number right there. If you need to contact for support, which is I believe the Best Buy Geek Squad protection number. There is a warranty card here. Ideally, you don't even need to fill this out and send this in. You can just register online with my Asus and that'll register your product to your email. It looks like you're just gonna need a fairly basic small Phillips head to open this guy up. Looks pretty easy. There's a link in the description to the uh, unboxing kit that I'm using. So this is a pop-up screw, it's not coming out. Like uh, the ones in the middle here are a little bit longer than the ones on the side. So you're gonna wanna keep your screws separated, okay? So two longs right here and then the ones on the side are a little bit shorter. If you get them mixed up, you can use that kind of as a rough guide. Now that I see it, there is a screw right here behind the orange plastic thing, so you're gonna need to take that off. I did not notice that screw. 
These are two beefy speakers already here on the right and left sides. A 90 watt hour battery. That's a very good value. Almost every laptop around the $1,100 price point comes with like 60 to maybe 80 watt hour range with the average probably being 70 watt hours. Okay, so we have this black plastic shroud. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to take it off. I think I will in order to show you guys what's going on underneath here. Well, we've got one SSD slot right here. We've got a second SSD slot right here so a completely open 2280 ssd slot that looks like would it would support uh dual sided ssds so we got a samsung made in the philippines 8 gig 1rx8 which is faster memory which i like that ddr4 3200 so it is a double-sided memory that should provide a, a bit above average memory performance. We've got uh, two large heat pipes, I guess one really large heat pipe and one smaller heat pipe, like a medium heat pipe, going between the two rear exhausts. Then we've got a third heat pipe that comes down and snakes down into the CPU VRMs. And then we have the GPU VRMs covered of this heat pipe. It's a dedicated heat pipe to this exhaust for the CPU and a dedicated heat pipe for this exhaust. But if I were to guess, this is probably the CPU, this is probably the GPU, but they're, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's basically about the same amount of cooling for the GPU and CPU in this laptop. I think this is a very good thermal cooling setup does have a little bit of bend to it, but it does feel premium because it is metal. This is pretty dang firm. I'm pressing down really hard, not much bend, just a little bit of bending. And this is honestly stronger than most laptops. A bit more flex right here in the front of the touchpad. Corner over here, almost no flex at all. No flex at all in the top up here. Top middle, there is some flex. Top right, no flex again. Um, and notice right away, we do have a, a multi single zone keyboard. So it's not just a yellow keyboard. And you can see I'm, I'm moving it up and down and the laptop brightness is not changing. Asus, what is going on with your uh, brightness? This is the uh, software you can use to, to change your audio settings. It's called Dolby Access. Most Asus laptops I use dynamic. 43.2, 43.3 for our lows song. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do our first song. I believe we're gonna just do everything, everything in dynamic mode. I, that's probably the best option. Yeah, the bass is not amazing. Uh, it's not that punchy, I think, but the, the actual mids and highs were not too bad. The overall volume, not that loud. Mainly around like 82, 83 decibels, and some of the louder laptops are getting like, you know, 85, 87 decibels, so it depends. I would say the speakers handle that song much better. It's it's less bassy. I think the bassiness of the first song really just like washes out the mids and highs a lot more. So uh, that song was much better. You get a little bit of thump from the bass. Bass is still not a great, but the mids and highs come through pretty clearly. These speakers are very similar in the same ballpark vein, at least as the Strix G16. Uh, I would say a little, little bit worse, like a little bit more budgety. I would give them like 7.8, um, 7.7, 7 .7, somewhere in that ballpark, I think. They're basically right around the average, maybe just slightly above average compared to uh, even more cheaper systems. I would say this touchpad is uh, it's a glass touchpad, first of all. Okay, that's huge. This thing is so smooth. It, it glides really well. It's large enough for multi-finger gestures. Click is a little bit mushy and the right side's a little bit easier to press down than the left side, but uh, at least than the middle. Much better touchpad than the other budgety systems I've been reviewing lately that use plastic touchpads. The keyboard here has a lot of extra functionality baked into it. There's, if you press FN plus Aura, you can change the the keyboard mode. So color cycle is the, the default. Static is just red. Um, but you can change the static color to something else. 
The control and FN key. The FN key, of course, lets you use the secondary functions on the F1 through 12. So keyboard brightness up and down, mute over here on the left. Aura lets you change, of course, the, the colors of the keyboard. This is your fan profile button. You press FN plus F5. That'll change your fan profile between performance, silent, turbo. Snipping tool button, brightness up and down buttons, which are not working right now our display button on the F9, turn off touchpad button, put the Windows laptop to sleep, airplane mode to disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Then we have a delete key, pause, break, system, print screen, home and end button. I don't like that the home and end button are the same key press, thankfully, we do have home and end here on the arrow keys, which makes it easy for us to um, jump around when we're doing with a Word document or whatever, page up, page down. FN plus the enter key to pull up the calculator. A full, like a fairly full size, fully featured number pad, which I, I like the number pad on this. Volume up and down mic mute and armory crate button you, you press this button and it's going to launch the armory crate application which you use to control the laptop the wasd keys are, are extra backlit with uh, the translucentness i think that looks pretty good in this implementation feels smooth it's got a nice keyboard action the keys are softer. It's not a very tactile, like mechanical feel to them, but I think the keyboard has excellent feel overall and I like it a lot. The caps lock also has a backup light, back uh, backlit light here so you can tell when it's enabled. And the keyboard backlight itself, pretty good. Like the keyboard backlight for some reason is higher quality across the whole key than the Strix G16 series, which suffers from like the different parts of the key really not being lit up very well. Some of that is still evident, like the F3, like the three, the number three, the bottom half of the number three there is not lit up very well. The F4, the, the number four there, bottom half of that is not lit up very well. It's still very easy to uh, see the keyboard backlight, even with all the lights enabled. So the, the brightness on the keyboard Keyboard backlight is very good. The F12 is moved over. Like basically, usually the delete key is directly above the backspace key. So you might end up basically pressing F12 instead of delete a lot until you get used to that. Yeah, not amazing. One of the lower quality webcams, like my hair on my beard, for example, is very fuzzy even when I'm looking at it here. It appears to be a lower resolution uh, and it's fairly noisy. Not very high detail on the face there. It's gonna get the job done. You can talk to grandma or your dad or family or whatever, but it's not gonna be a really high quality webcam if you're looking for like something very professional or higher quality in general for the webcam quality. Okay, so this is the core dashboard that you need to be aware of uh, and learn. If you click the Windows profile, that will basically default to whatever you set in your power settings for Windows 10. I will pretty much use uh, performance or turbo or manual, unless maybe I'm like in a library or some kind of similar setting. A silent mode is basically designed for ultra low quiet gameplay, or just like you want this machine to be quiet in the office. It's gonna significantly reduce your performance. Performance mode gives you like 80 to 90% of the performance as turbo. Turbo applies a small overclock. So silent mode should be very, very quiet. Performance mode will be a little bit noisy on the fans, but not too loud. Turbo mode is going to be like, Foo! and manual mode, you can tune it to either be quiet, medium, or super loud. And you can also tune the performance of the laptop quite a bit in manual mode. So if I pop over to manual mode, so you can see we've got a manual fan profile curve right here. You can ramp your fans as much or as little as you want. For our testing, we're going to do max fans, which is basically just sliding all those up. And then we're going to do that for the GPU as well for our base boost clock we're going to leave it at 50 slash 100 and 25 watts for our dynamic boost 87 degrees for our target and then for our pl1 it's 115 we can just raise that up to 135 135 and we'll see how that goes if you go to ultimate mode that disables the integrated gpu on the intel cpu that uh this basically makes it slightly pull less wattage it's really not a big deal but you can no longer have good battery life when you're in gpu ultimate mode i would never put this into gpu ultimate mode if i own the laptop, I would just leave it in standard because then I can use advanced Optimus to switch between the two for better battery life. So maximum fans are right around 56 and a half decibels, 80 degrees on that CPU. It's getting a little bit spicy. 
Overall, GPU temperature at 71 degrees is very good. Not as good as like some of the laptops we've seen. These are very good temps overall. We're not anywhere close to thermal throttling on the CPU or the GPU here in maximum fan mode. 125, 116 watts up there. So we were pulling a little bit higher wattage, at least temporarily. Now turbo mode is going to reduce the fan noise a little bit. So we went from 56 decibels, 56 and a half to 55 and a half decibels. So GPU temp hitting 75, CPU temp staying right around the same, a little bit higher, creeping up into the low 80s. Okay, I saw 87 on the GPU temporarily there, or on the CPU. So we are now in performance mode. Our GPU TDP dropped down to 95 watts limit, it looks like. So we were bouncing around between 105 to 115-ish range most of the time. Our, our GPU boost clock went from 2300, now we're down to a little over 2000, 2100, almost 2200 there temporarily. Right now, our temps are actually coming down. Um, our CPU also dropped in wattage. Well, we were pulling probably like 35 to 40 watts on the CPU when we were in turbo and manual mode. Now we're only doing about 20 watts and our temps are delicious at 73. And we're still getting pretty good FPS here in time spy, doing 53, 50, 49. That's gonna be lower levels of performance for sure. 47 decibels, that is just so quiet. Here we go, silent mode now. 55 watts. We're getting 1600 on the GPU boost clock, down from 2350 approximately, 2340 on turbo mode. Our temps are still very good. CPU is still doing around 20 watts, 25 watts right now. 45 and a half decibels for silent mode. Between silent mode and performance mode, performance mode really gives you a lot more performance, only for like two or three decibels increase in sound. I'd say performance mode is the right place to be if you want an acoustically balanced gaming experience where you're getting the vast majority of power from this laptop. All right, so here's our display results. 97% of sRGB. Now keep in mind, my Spider 5 Elite actually underestimates the color gamut by like seven, eight percent on average. We're actually getting above 100% sRGB coverage with this laptop. 76 of Adobe, 76 of the P3 color gamut. Very, very good overall color gamut coverage for an $1,100 laptop, but not as amazing as some of the deals that I talked about earlier, like the MSI Pulse 15 with 100% P3 color gamut coverage, 275 nits brightness on the display. Uh, so we're not quite reaching 300 nits brightness. That's a little bit disappointing. This thing, not quite as bright, but very vibrant display. Right out the gate, the P cores started out at around 4.3, but now it's doing 4.1 across the P cores. Our E cores are doing 3.2, 3.3. Not necessarily amazing clock speeds. You gotta keep in mind, this is a 12th gen CPU. Our CPU package temp is hitting thermal throttling at 95 degrees. When it goes red here, that means that thermal throttling has been triggered. Our maximum wattage on the CPU was 123 watts, which is very, very high amount of wattage, higher than average. We got 17,552 for our first run. 17,309 is still excellent performance for the money. 16,880 for our fifth run there. Let's go ahead and start a 10 minute test. We're almost done with our Cinebench R23 10 minute run. We are averaging 83 degrees on the CPU core temp, 91 degrees for the CPU package. So we were not thermal throttling at 91 watts of power on average. That's a good amount of power. That's above average amount of power going through that CPU. I'm impressed overall, Four point, sorry, 3.8 gigahertz for the P cores. 2.9 gigahertz on the E cores. I wish the clock speed was a little higher. If you can undervolt this guy, you definitely could get a lot more CPU uh, performance out of here. 2355 for our GPU clock. Over 110 watts to the GPU there. Our temps are excellent. 61 degrees, 69 as expected with manual fan mode. 12,197, 13,021 for our CPU score. Very good scores. We busted the 12K mark. And this is without applying any kind of uh, bigger overclock to the GPU. I'm pretty sure we could bust 12,500 if we applied an overclock.
even on high settings right now, we are like cranking the frame rate. It's hitting the max. 1% low is almost hitting our max frame rate, which means we're basically filling almost every single possible uh, screen refresh rate frame. And this is on high settings. Let's go ahead and swap it over to the low settings. The maximum frame rate for this game is 300 FPS and we're basically hitting it right now. Yeah, so this thing is awesome. Okay, so here we are. I can definitely hear audio separation pretty well with this laptop. I'm surprised. But yeah, this is uh, this screen has no ghosting. Everything is super smooth, fluid, very responsive feeling. I feel like I can aim really, really well. Very fun. That was great. I really enjoyed playing Apex Legends on this laptop. A++. It's only 144 hertz response rate, but still the performance was awesome. Full screen exclusive, 144 hertz. Everything, everything's set to minimum. DLSS is on quality and textures are set to high. We are obviously in a very populated center of a city right now. Everyone's dropping in. It's definitely a little, a little bit stuttery, I'm gonna be honest. We're getting 76, 37 for our 1% lows. Doing 81 FPS, 43 for our 1% low. This is still very playable, honestly. Like, notice that we are not GPU bound. We're only doing 32 watts through the GPU. It's so CPU bound, it's ridiculous right now. Um, if you want more FPS in this game right now, you really need a better CPU, not a GPU. Where did he go? Oh, where? There he is. <laughs> Found him. <laughs> It's really low 1% lows. We're getting a bit of a stutter. I don't know why. Maybe our VRAM is running out. We're at 7.5 gigs of VRAM usage. We probably got to drop our VRAM, drop our textures from high. Wow. All right, so our FPS is pretty struggling. This is definitely not an ideal gaming performance. 61 FPS, 36 for 1% lows. I'm pretty sure we would get more FPS if we had like a more powerful... 13th gen Intel or Ryzen 7000 series CPU, but that's a new map. I don't know what's going on with Warzone right now. So CSGO, 400 to 500 FPS right now with this i7-12700H CPU, absolutely killing this game. Interesting, I'd see, I, it seems like I'm dropping frames right now. I wonder, it's, a, it's around the same time as before. I wonder if, it, if my internet might start struggling right now when everyone's getting home from work. Interesting, because it's two two times in a row where the live stream was perfect, and then around the same time, it started messing up, so. 408.62 FPS, a uh, very good CSGO performance. Adibus was saying around 90 FPS in the smoke, which is also very good. Graphic settings set to ultra, 1920 by 1080, quality DLSS. Okay, here we are, God of War Ultra. 1080p, 74 FPS so far, 39 for 1% lows, 80 degrees on the CPU, a little bit spicy on the CPU temp, but uh, still overall very good temp. So I'm curious to see if it eventually spikes over 90 if we were to stay in the game for a few minutes. Okay, so 79 FPS, 43 for a 1% low, a 4050 getting around 55 FPS in this exact same test, 4060 getting like in the 60s, 79 is a pretty big jump and this is performing really, really well. 79, uh, 70 degrees on the GPU, mid 80s on the CPU, overall very good. All right, so how are we doing? Looks like our CPU temp's a bit spicy at 90 degrees, 94 degrees, 80, 90 watts to the CPU though. That's very high amount of CPU utilization. 105.75, so 106 FPS if we're rounding up. Very good performance. That's on ray tracing ultra. Frame generation enabled DLSS3, DLSS on quality. Okay, so we've got a new FPS average going right there. It is so smooth. This game is silky smooth. Okay, so 105 FPS, 37 for a 1% low. It felt very smooth and very good to aim with. If we drop this over to just high settings with DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled. Now we're doing 170 FPS. So if you want, you can easily get to full 144 Hertz just by turning off ray tracing and setting it to high settings. All ultra with textures on low. Ray tracing is enabled, DLSS enabled, frame gen enabled. Notice that our GPU is not hitting 100% utilization and our low 
low textures are not maximizing our VRAM utilization. We have two extra gigs of VRAM. You could probably bump this up to uh, medium textures then and still have good performance. And you know, right now we are maxing our regular RAM at 16. You really wanna have 32 gigs of RAM for this game as well. So that could be causing our 1% low stutters as well. So here we go. Let's go for our run through. 63 degrees on the GPU, excellent. 80 degrees on the CPU, also very good. The power pull through on the CPU is very high at 55. Makes sense. This is a very busy area of the map and very CPU bound. Overall, very playable. You're gonna have a lot better 1% low performance in other areas of Hogwarts, but in Hogsmeade, it's pretty much stuttery on almost all of the laptops out there, except like the 4080, 4090. Yeah, you might wanna try lowering some of the other settings. You might be able to get better 1% low performance on lower settings, but probably not because it's really the NPCs that are causing that stuttering, I believe. Ultra quality preset, DLSS on quality, 1080p, 144 hertz resolution. 95 degrees in dead space. Very spicy CPU temps, very typical of Asus laptops. You can lower the power limits to get better temps in this laptop for sure, and still get very similar FPS probably. Very high FPS, 96 FPS. This is definitely above average. 4050s get like 60 FPS around these settings. Uh, 4060s getting 70, 75 FPS. We are 90% approximately for GPU utilization, which means we are CPU bound right now. GPU utilization is really not helping us that much. Like you really just need a more powerful CPU if you wanna get higher frames. These uh, CPU temps might be worrying to some of you out there. I don't think it's going to damage your laptop. Okay, so 99 FPS, 33 for a 1% low, very typical for a 1% lows. 99 FPS is very good. Certainly a performance improvement overall compared to most of the other laptops I've tested. We're going to go to DLSS on quality. We're going to do ultra settings with textures set to medium. We're just going to test it with no shaders being fully optimized. It takes longer to load into the game and expect slightly worse performance. 112 FPS right now, that is really good. 101 for our 1% lows so far. Phenomenal. So you're gonna be able to do high refresh rate gaming with the 4070. Again, our CPU temps are a bit spicy, so you could drop that CPU TDP down to 60 and fix that. So right now, 114 FPS, 62 for a 1% low. Excellent gameplay, absolutely phenomenal. Let's try performance. We're gonna try performance fan profile. All right, let's see what we get for our, So we were at 114. With performance fan profile, our wattages are gonna drop on the CPU and GPU by a little bit. And look at that, our temps are coming in line. Our performance is still 110. And now the fan noise is very quiet on the laptop. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch it back into manual mode for the rest of our testing. But I think that's a really good example of like, you can get some really quiet fans, really good performance. But yeah, so far at 8, 815 to 830, last night and tonight, it's the first time I've tried streaming this late. And it's just, become the stream has become much more stuttery. Like right now it's showing a lot of dropped frames. So our temps are phenomenal. 67 degrees on the GPU, 82 on the CPU, 4.4 gigahertz, 60 watts of power to the CPU, 121 FPS average so far, currently doing 140 FPS. 125.9 FPS, 126 FPS in Dying Light 2. That is very good, very, very good. Exclusive full screen, highest settings, ray tracing on ultra. Wow. It's really pushing the CPU a lot here. 80 degrees to the CPU, 84, 62 watts to the CPU. We were almost pushing over 90 degrees for a little bit there and a higher wattage, but it, it came down a little bit. 92 watts to the GPU. We're not quite 100% GPU saturated, but we're pretty close. 96, 98% GPU utilization, 123 FPS so far. Again, high refresh rate gaming on ultra settings with ray tracing enabled. I mean, that's pretty freaking awesome. Very good performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 71 degrees on the GPU, 89 on the CPU. Getting a little spicy on that CPU. Okay, 127 FPS. High refresh rate gaming, no problem with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So, ray tracing ultra preset, then we're gonna do DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled, 1080p full screen. Here we go. 
83 FPS right now, 61 for our 1% low. We're hitting 99% GPU utilization. That's excellent. Very, very good. 98 watts, 99 watts of power to the GPU. Wow, we didn't dive into the water at that time. That's a little different. <laughs> Over 100 watts of power to the GPU. One of the few games we're actually seeing push over 100 watts of power to the GPU. It's very, very good. Temps are still great. Overall, CPU and GPU temps are great. Not thermal throttling on the CPU in this game. I wish the CPU was a little bit lower. I'd prefer under 80 degrees if we could. So there is our result, 99 FPS, 72 for a 1% low. That's extremely good for a 1% low. We were to just go into settings and say, go to graphics and just flip ray tracing to off 166 FPS 120 for a 1% low now. So now we're doing a high refresh rate gaming in The Witcher 3, just disabling ray tracing. Boom. The Asus Tough F15 is a phenomenal gaming laptop at $1,400. It's very good value. I, even at $1,400, it's good value. At $1,149, it's extremely good value. You're getting frame gen support. You're getting over 12,000 in time spy. You're getting like a right around 17,000 in Cinebench R23. You're getting great performance in every single game we tested. We had high CPU temps in Dead Space, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a handful of games. We can fix that simply by going into Armory Crate and lowering our TDP or by switching to one of the other power profiles, performance or turbo mode, which is going to limit the CPU wattage down to a lower wattage and not really hurt the performance too much. Unboxing the laptop, the, the, the laptop is a decent unboxing experience, but it's nothing special. The power adapter is a decent cord length and it's 240 watts. You can use USB-C power charging up to 100 watts to power this with a more portable USB-C charger. Quality control on this laptop was very good. Flex test was very good. We've got a metal lid on here. It's a very rigid feel to this laptop. It is plasticky build, but it feels like the high quality type of plastic, which is better, I think, than the Acer Nitro series, the Lenovo IdeaPad series. It feels like a more premium product overall. Single zone RGB backlight on the keyboard. I'd probably just set this to white and forget about it. Speakers were not amazing. Just like us, I think we rated it as 7.6 overall. Decent volume, decent bass, but the clarity can get muddled and all that. But at least the acoustics on this laptop are very good with the fan noise. Uh, only 45 decibels in performance mode, in silent mode. Performance mode was like 47 decibels and performance mode was basically 90 plus percent of the total overall performance on this machine, which is phenomenal. So you can have really high FPS gaming, a quiet laptop that has pretty dang good temps uh, and it's not gonna make that much noise. And, that, and then you're gonna be able to hear the game over the speakers pretty dang well. And the spatial audio was pretty good with Dolby Atmos, we did test that. The webcam was not very good quality, below average webcam quality. Definitely could be an improved place for Asus to potentially improve this laptop. The ports on this, Thunderbolt 4 support, so you can use an external eGPU enclosure or Thunderbolt docks. The keyboard has a great layout with great functionality and good backlighting. The touchpad is a glass touchpad, which is another level of premium quality that you're not gonna get in a lot of the other $1,150 laptops. The display was not as bright as I was hoping for. 274 nits brightness is not as bright as you'd ideally want when you're spending $1,400. At $1,149 though, that's pretty good. It's decent. The actual color gamut and contrast on the display was very good. Close to 100% sRGB, if not more than 100% sRGB. And uh, I believe it was around uh, in the mid 80s for Adobe and P3 color gamuts, which is pretty, pretty great overall. Battery life on this is likely to be in the six to eight hour range, depending on how you optimize it. Might be able to push beyond eight hours if you optimize it really, really well with a great browser that's very low power requirements. Cinemetch R23, 17,000, Time Spy, 12,200 approximately uh, for the GPU score. Really great scores. The CPU temp's getting a little spicy needs a little tweaking a little bit in certain power modes. I feel like this thing is gonna last five, seven years, no problem. For the money, this is an excellent overall choice. There are other good choices out there. Warzone 2, we had under levels, underperforming levels of performance. There was a new update in Warzone 2, changed the map. We needed more testing. It was weird. Um, so we're only getting like, it was like 82 FPS in certain areas. That's what I was uh, close to what I was expecting for this laptop. Other areas we're only getting like 59 to 60 something like high 50s, low 60s for the FPS. And it was stuttering a decent amount and the VRAM was being completely eaten up. So maybe we got to turn the textures on low 
and reload everything. I don't know. And I would say that the Warzone 2 would need a retesting or maybe look for a patch update for Warzone 2. Taking the laptop apart and upgradability, we have an extra SSD slot on this laptop. I love that. The RAM are swappable. 16 gigs are included though, and they're good quality RAM. Probably don't need to upgrade that unless you wanna to go to 32 gigs. Well, that's totally fine. You can do that. Everything's upgradable. I think double-sided SSDs are likely going to fit in this laptop, no problem as well. So that's also a double thumbs up. And taking the laptop apart is pretty easy because you have the pop-up screw in the right corner, which makes it easy to pry the laptop apart. So it was very quick. Yeah. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Brandon. Bye.